believe it or not looking at these baskets today i'm fixing to take a pair of scissors to them because they are starting to get a little gangly like uh basically like giving a getting a haircut or starting to shave and your beard grows in fuller that kind of thing um these petunias have just got like this is one runner here don't have any lateral branches and once they get to a certain point of stretch they start getting heavy and they start bending down and then they don't look very full at all so right here is a good example of one that has gotten heavy and now it's drooped down and it looks like it's got a high and tight haircut or something it's kind of ridiculous looking i'm going to uh take some scissors and i'll show you <coughs> and just kind of shake some of these up i'm not going to do all of them because we're getting ready to open but um if I don't get it done here pretty quick in the next couple of weeks, they're really going to start looking bad. And I'm going to really wish I'd have done it two weeks ago. So um, I'm going to show you how I prune these things up. Now I'm going to show you here kind of what I'm talking about and why I'm doing this. You can really see it right here on this bag. See this branch that's hanging out here? Well, it's like a Christmas tree. Um, you know, your Christmas tree looks kind of full. You got to be real careful when you're pruning the bottom of a Christmas tree because you can take off one branch and make a big old hole in the side of it. Well, it's kind of the same thing here. Um, see, these branches that get real long, that's because the plants, if, if that branch were to be gone, it would make a hole in the plant. Well, the branch will get gone because it's going to get heavy and it's going to drop down won't be able to support its weight anymore and uh it's going to make it look bad but i'll show you right here um well right here's a perfect example of that one i just cut off it's just like a tomato here at the top of every leaf joint there is basically what amounts to a sucker right there's one right there's one and there's another one just a little one starting on top of that leaf joint every one of those is going to create a lateral branch and it's going to throw out a bloom at the end of it just like all of these so ultimately here in a couple of weeks of feeding these things these are going to have way more blooms believe it or not it'll have a whole lot more blooms than what it does right now um my mama would have a fit if she saw me cutting this plant up, butchering it as she calls it, um, because it's pretty. And it is a pretty nice looking plant right now, but uh, it's never had a wax job, but I think it's uh, kind of like a wax job. It might hurt for a minute, but the end result is going to be pretty nice. And now because this bag here is not really focused on blooming anymore because I just cut all the blooms off of it and basically cut the tips off of all of the ends of the branches, it's going to start shooting out lateral branches everywhere and it's really going to thicken it up and it will have far more blooms on it than what it did.
Now me and Holly were just talking about this. If you're familiar with suckering a tomato, it's always seemed like to me when you go through a field and you jerk all the suckers off of the tomatoes, it's like you just about have to put another string on them in another day or two because they it seems like they double overnight. These petunias will be the same way. Now that we've cut all this extra growth of, off of them and shaped them like a, like a hedge row, they will really just explode and it won't take long at all and they'll be covered in little blooms like this. Um, so, you see how these are nice and shaped like they're supposed to and how gangly this thing looks. And we did leave some of them because we're opening full time starting this weekend. So we don't want to cut all the color off of everything. So we've got to have some stuff to sell right away. Um, so we left some, but uh, we've got like 500 baskets over here that need to be pruned as well. So, and there again, we're not gonna prune them all, but we're gonna prune a lot of them. All right, now I'm over here working on some baskets and these really would have been good if they were pruned last week or the week before, but we've really got more to do than we've got help to accomplish, unfortunately at the moment. Um, but the problem that you have with petunias and different varieties, obviously, do different things. Like this is an easy wave variety. No, this is a shock wave. I can tell by the small blooms. Shock wave uh, is a more compact bloom. But you see how the plant's more compact and tight and more branching to it versus this is a Tritunia star mix. Um, and you see how big the branches are and how there's a lot less of them. Uh, the pink right there, that is an easy wave variety. Not as tight as a shock wave, but still tighter than some of these other varieties. And my objective in here is to kind of round them up a little bit like this so that they will really put back out thick. Um, a lot of these waves I can leave for now. Um, I just don't want to get myself too far behind on this stuff because once they all start looking terrible, it takes you a long time to recover from that. And um, by that point, people who are really on fire to buy some hanging baskets have either found them somewhere else or whatever. So you need to, you gotta keep a, a steady supply of color. Um, some B9 growth regulator would have helped out a lot if I had timed it right. Um, and some of this stuff might not be too late I'll show you a little bit about that later. I've got some stuff that I need to get sprayed with the uh, regulator. Um, but we will, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a little bit. Here is an example of an easy wave purple doing what I call like a scald out. And I mean, we're not to the point of the summer where it's uh, scalding out, so to speak, yet. You see how this is bare right here? It's because all of the, the branches are leaning off the sides and all those tips are the only things that have blooms on. So eventually this will really start looking terrible because this stuff will hang down low and there will be no blooms and very little foliage up top because it hasn't have, if it doesn't get cut back. So that's one of the reasons we cut them back. It'll really start turning kind of brown in here and it'll look decent down below where all the new growth is. But the idea is you want to keep the new growth tight and thick up around the basket. So that's the idea with cutting it back because once we cut it back, this is just going to explode this area right in here with new fresh growth, just like this is out here. 
this is a little recon that could pulling a 20 foot wagon around we we've got about twice as many retail tomatoes in the greenhouse as we do field tomatoes uh, we got 1500 field tomatoes here we did put them on this 20 foot wagon with them spaced out to get more light but uh, still our tomatoes took up the whole dang trailer we thought we was going to be able to put some of them retail tomatoes on here but uh, <laughs> no such luck but I'm going to show you what I've been telling you about withholding water from your tomatoes to harden them up and to keep them short so some of these are looking fairly sad you can see those right there are pretty floppy and laid down here's a good example that right there believe it or not is about what i want to see a few times um, by letting them wilt down and then watering them and standing them back up you can really control height but also it really toughens them up um, and makes them a lot more tolerant of when you go to transplant them so now that we've got these where they're going to be outside in the wind and the cold night air i'm going to water them up pretty good um, i've really been holding the water back from them and just perking them up when they start to wilt on me um, but now we're going to have temperature on our side and I'll be able to move them around a little more conveniently. Unfortunately, I wish I could leave them on this wagon until we plant them, but they're calling for a frost on Tuesday. So um, we'll probably have to handle them again, but I wanted to get them out of there because I don't want them to stretch anymore. These right here are probably the tallest ones on the trailer. And I really don't want them to get any taller than that. I mean, that's that's pretty pretty good to go to the field with they get any longer than that they start getting pretty aggravating to deal with when you're trying to plant them and they are when they're just kind of spindly they don't take off and grow straight up and makes them more difficult to trellis this is a new setup that i have put together for this greenhouse so i didn't have sufficient water pressure over here the water like I needed to be able to and uh, so I got this 55 gallon drum a buddy of mine that used to be a dairy farmer had this set up in his barn for uh, washing out and he gave it to me it's got a cow drink uh, cow water tank uh, float valve in it which I'm actually gonna have to replace it's not shutting the water off all the way and it'll start leaking but I've got this little Harbor Freight pump here with fittings. So it gets this water in the top of the barrel, comes out the bottom of the barrel, pump picks it up, sends it through the chemilizer and out to everywhere that I need it to go. And it works pretty dang good. You get real good pressure out of it. I've actually got a 35 PSI regulator on it, um, which I could probably take off, but uh, it works out pretty good like it is. It might at times be a little bit too much if I didn't have the pressure regulator on it. I don't know what that pump will do exactly. But it's pretty nice to have sufficient water pressure for a change. So this stuff right here is your friend in the greenhouse. Just learned about this really for the first time sometime last year. And it's kind of a game changer. Um, this is, what this is is a plant growth regulator. There's all kinds of plant growth regulators. A lot of them that I don't even know anything about. There's B9, which this is, there's A-Rest. There's bonsai um, and a slew of other ones. Um, 
there's one for greenhouse vegetables that I can't think of the name. Sue Magic is what it's called. I've never used it, but um, B9 is one of the more safe ones. It wears off fairly quickly, and it's pretty hard to really damage something with B9. Um, it's a little more expensive regulator to use than, say, Bonsai. If you're a pro and you really know how to use Bonsai and know how it works, Bonsai is fantastic. Problem is, um, Bonsai really puts the brakes on something. When you spray a plant with Bonsai, it is just about done growing. <laughs> Um, and I don't really know what triggers it to start growing again. Um, I can think of some situations where that'd be real handy, but I really want my customers to get a plant and take it home and put it in the ground and it take off growing. So what I'm really trying to accomplish with this B9 is inducing lateral branching. And that's what this stuff is really good for. Um, I started using this last year on mums and it uh, basically when you your mum covers the top of the pot that's when you start spraying it with B9 about once a week at a fairly low rate um, and it will really make them tough as nails but uh, I've got some stuff in here sun's about to get behind the trees you don't want to spray this stuff in the heat of the day because you can burn the leaves just with the the chemical sitting on there but uh, I've got some stuff in here that really needs to be treated and I will show you what I'm talking about the mosquito plant is one that's gonna get sprayed with B9 I got some more in some other greenhouses um, I've got marigolds back here that are going to get hit with B9 because they are really as tall as they need to get. And once they start shading out the tray like this, they're going to start wanting to stretch like this. That's not what we want. That is what we want. So we're going to spray them with B9. Um, there's something else in here that was a really good example. Uh, I'm probably going to hit this lantana because you see how it's getting kind of gangly. It'll probably get, we'll cut it back at some point too, but I'm going to go ahead and hit it with B9 just to um, make it start throwing out some side shoots instead of stretching. Um, that mint right there really needs to be pruned. I don't know that I will spray it with B9. Um, but basically that's what it's good for. It will stop the stem from stretching and make the uh, the inner nodes, I believe is the proper term. I'm sure somebody will call me out if that's wrong. <laughs> but pretty much the suckers. It'll make them start growing. Um, but this stuff's pretty cool. It comes with a little scooper. That little scoop is 1,250 parts per million. So you mix this stuff in 1,250 parts per million increments. I think the rate goes up to 5,000 uh, parts per million. I've never gone that strong. This stuff's pretty mild. It's kind of hard to mess it up, but um, I'm, I always take a cautious approach. So I usually spray about 2,500 or 3,750 parts per million. But um, I'm going to get a gallon of this stuff mixed up and go around and do some spraying. Y'all know how a pump-up sprayer works. I don't need to show you that. But uh, I appreciate y'all watching, and I will see y'all next time.